Hi and welcome to the third of our exam prep videos for probability. This video covers questions on tree diagrams. Question 1 is about the probabilities of a team winning when considering the fitness of its players. And we are asked to draw a tree diagram to illustrate the situation and hence calculate the probability of them winning their next game. Pause the video here to have a read through and then give it a try. For the tree diagram, let's first consider the fitness of the players. We will make the first branch all players fit and the second branch not all players fit. Then we are given that the probability that this team has all its players fit is 70% and so we put that here and we then know that the probability of not all players fit will be 30% because these must add up to 1 or 100%. From each of these, we will then have whether the team wins or loses, and we're told that the probability they will win if all their players are fit is 90%, and so we place 90% here, and can then place 10% along here. When they are not fit, we're told the probability of them winning becomes 45%, and so this is then 45%, and this 55%. Again, each of these need to add up to 100%. Now that our tree diagram is complete, we can calculate the probability of them winning their next game by finding the pathways that involve them winning. The one option of winning is along here if all players are fit, and the other option of winning is along here if not all players are fit. We find the product along each of these paths and then add the two together to get the probability of them winning their next game, and this is 76,5%. Question 2 is about the chances of a driver getting a red light and or a green arrow and it is asking you to first draw a tree diagram and then calculate some probabilities. Pause the video here to give this question a try. So first in our tree diagram we will put the options of the light being red or not being red and we're told that the chance of the light being red is 0,6 and the chance of it not being red is therefore 0,4 because these have to add up to 1. Next, we place our options for a green arrow or not a green arrow. Here, we're told that they have a 0,7 chance of not getting a green arrow if the light is red. And if the probability here is 0,7, then this must be 0,3, because these together must equal 1. We're also told that if the light is not red, they have a 0,8 chance of getting a green arrow, which means this is 0,8 along here, and this here will then be 0,2. And so now if we find the probability for 2.2 that the light is not red, well, we calculated that already when creating the tree diagram, 1 minus 0,6, which is 0,4. Then for 2.3, the probability of getting a red light and a green arrow well here, we find that by finding the product of the probabilities along this path, so 0, 0,6 times 0, 0,3, which equals 0, 0,18. And lastly for 2.4, the probability of not getting a green arrow, there are two pathways that give us this outcome, and so we must find the product of the probabilities along each pathway and add them together. So 0, 0,6 times 0, 0,7, plus 0, 0,4 times 0, 0,2, and this gives us 0, 0,5. Our third tree diagram question is based on tickets bought in a raffle, and we are asked to draw a tree diagram showing the chances of winning each of the prizes, and then to determine these probabilities. Pause the video for a moment to read through the question and to give it a try. We start off by seeing that there are three prizes to be won, and so there will need to be three layers to our tree diagram. For each prize, in each eventuality, the two options are she wins or she doesn't win. Let's look now at placing the probabilities on each branch. For the first draw, there are 500 tickets to select from, and 10 of these tickets in the draw are Zia's, and so the probability she wins third prize is 10 over 500. The probability she doesn't win is 490 over 500. When they then move on to drawing for second prize, there are now only 499 tickets left in total to select from. 
If Zia did win third prize, then she will have nine tickets left in the draw, and so the probability of her winning second prize is nine over 499. If she didn't win third prize, 10 of the tickets would still be hers, and so the probability of her winning the second prize would then be 10 over 499. In each of these cases, we find the other branch's probability by knowing that the sum of these must be 1. Then lastly, for first prize, there are now 498 tickets left in total to select from. If Zia won third prize and second prize, then she would have 8 tickets left in the draw, and so the probability would be 8 over 498. If she won third but not second prize, then she would have 9 tickets left. If she didn't win third prize but did win second prize, then she would have nine tickets left. And if she didn't win either third or second prize, she would still have ten tickets left in the draw. We can now complete each of these branches' probabilities by making sure each pair adds up to one. Now that our tree diagram is complete, we can move on to determining the probabilities. 3.2.1 what is the probability that Zia doesn't win any prizes? Well, let's track along the tree diagram, each time following the doesn't win branch. And to find the probability, we find the product of these probabilities along the pathway. And that gives us a probability of 0,94. 3.2.2. .2. What is the probability that Zia wins all three prizes? Well, this time we track along the wins branches and find the product of these probabilities. We can see the chances here are so small that the probability rounds off to 0,0,0. 0. 0. 0. For 3.2.3, what is the probability that she wins one prize? Well, there are three pathways to consider for this scenario, winning the third prize, winning the second prize and winning the first prize. Each time we find the product of the probabilities along each pathway, third prize, second prize, first prize, then we add these products together and we get that the probability of winning one prize only is 0,06, which is also not very likely. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you're feeling more comfortable and confident with tree diagrams now. Our next video is the last of the exam prep videos and covers questions on the contingency tables and the counting principle. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.